Hey everyone, it's Philippa here. I'm going to try and record this video for about the third time. <laughs> I have all the kids home now, so I'm getting interrupted a lot. I just wanted to talk about um, briefly about winter wellness and hopefully we can, um, some of us anyway, can have a bit of a dialogue and share some tips on how we like to keep our kids healthy at this time of the year. So for um, my Northern Hemisphere friends, I live in the Southern Hemisphere. It's your summer at the moment, but it's our winter. So it is dark, cold, wet, miserable outside. <laughs> Hopefully it is not the same uh, indoors. <laughs> um, so obviously there are some basics. And look, all of this goes for every age group, right? But we're more, I think, a lot of people are more likely to action something for their children <laughs> than for themselves necessarily. But if we um, if we take actions for our kids, sometimes we benefit too. So, so winter wellness for kids. Uh, now obviously some basics staying warm and dry now it's not just that it's um, not a great idea for them to go outside and get soaked if it's pouring with rain and then sit in wet clothing for a long time but also uh, to think about the amount of moisture in our homes and i know that a lot of kiwis struggle with that and then um you know if, if it's damp inside your home often it feels colder than it technically is uh, but often new zealand homes are just cold anyway kiwi homes in the past certainly haven't really been built very well. <laughs> Let's just say my husband's family is from Europe and I think they're appalled <laughs> with the standard of New Zealand uh, housing builds. But anyway, um, onwards and upwards with that. Uh, now the World Health Organization recommends a minimum temperature of 18 degrees Celsius for uh, just keeping people healthy and happy. If you've got very young kids in the house or elderly people or somebody who's already sick, then I think the re recommendation then goes up to 20 degrees Celsius, which I think is a nice cozy comfy temperature. Um, if you feel like your house is not warm and dry enough or not as much so as you would like, I can highly recommend the work of Nelson Lebo. You can Google him. He's like a local eco expert and he has lots of suggestions in newspaper columns and his blog on um, all sorts of things that you can do to, to make your home warmer and drier and therefore healthier. So check him out. He's really cool. Um, he's really, he's really cool and really nice. Uh, sleep. Sleep is important. It's always important, but I think at this time of the year, we often feel like sleeping more. You may find that your kids seem tired earlier in the day why fight it if they if they need the sleep let's try and give it to them i say that should be a basic too really um running around outside and getting some fresh air and sunshine well i'm looking out the window and sunshine is not really on the menu at the moment <laughs> but when the weather is clear so when it's not raining or hailing or anything crazy like that um it is good still to get the kids outside for some fresh air um there are some studies that suggest that indoor pollution can get pretty bad um worse than outdoors and i would say that's got to be more the case in the winter time than the summer because in the summer in new zealand anyway we tend to throw doors and windows open and we have lovely cross breezes grow blowing through and in the winter time we close ourselves in Actually, um, airing the house out is one of the things that uh, that Nelson does recommend, but not necessarily for hours and hours at a time, because obviously opening your windows will bring a lot of cold air in, but you've got to be able to let some of the moisture out. Anyway, like I said, Google him. He's cool. Um, and then there are things like, okay, nutrition. So there are lots of reasons why we may not be um, optimally nourished these days just from food. But food obviously is a great place to start. And just a couple of notes. Um, eat the rainbow, they say, and I agree with that. You know, um, as many different colors as you can get on your plate, you're going to be getting all sorts of different um, phenols and, I don't know, bioflavonols and flavonoids rather. Um, all sorts of great things uh, and your fibers and um, and such. So eat the rainbow, I think is a good recommendation. Um, maybe slightly harder to do if you eat, you know, seasonal produce because there, there's not quite so much variety at this time of the year, but do what you can. And, um, I tend to like to feed our family mostly sort of whole foods, if you like. So I shop around the outside edges of the supermarket and not so much in the middle. So that it's less processed food basically. And there are a few reasons for that. Um, 
in some respects it's simpler um, but it certainly cuts out or helps to reduce the number of um, additives that the family is eating. Now some artificial additives actually have anti-nutritive effects which means that they may block your absorption of essential nutrients. Don't ask me to tell you which ones off the top of my head because I won't remember. Um, but you can Google that too. Don't you just love the age of the internet? <laughs> so we try to keep artificial additives to a minimum for that reason and also because sometimes artificial additives can have negative effects on um, especially kids and their emotions and therefore their behavior and all of those sorts of things. So we try to keep those things to to a minimum. It's not a bad idea if you can manage it. And like I said, that's, you know, shop around the outside of the supermarket. So the fresh produce section and the meat section and, you know, dairy if you eat it and try to go for the less processed stuff. Um, if yeah, Limiting sugar is a good idea if you can manage it or even just reducing, especially once they're already sick. Because there are studies that show that when we eat sugar, we suppress our immune system mm. for several hours. <laughs> so if you're going to have like a sugary drink and then two hours later a sugary drink and two hours a sug later another sugary drink, you're, you're keeping that your immune function suppressed. Possibly not ideal, especially at this time of the year. So that's worth considering. Um, details about that. Again, Google is your friend. Um, and let's see. Fruits for your vitamin C, if you can. But I do think that our needs for that can be so high, especially at this time of the year or any time when you're un under stress, that it's hard to get enough from fruit uh, without maybe giving yourself uh, an upset tummy or your kids doing so. Did your mother ever tell you, don't eat, like, so many plums, you'll get a sore tummy? Yeah, we, we don't necessarily want to go there. Um, so we tend to try and give ourselves, uh, our kids, a little supplement top up, right? So I'm not advocating using supplements as a replacement for a good wholesome diet. But I do think we notice if we slack a bit on the supplements – um, yeah, like we did recently, then uh, the kids may be more likely to come down with something like they did recently. <laughs> I should have known better. You can say, Philippa, you should have known better. <laughs> Isn't this your thing? Yes, this is my thing. So uh, we have rectified that or we're in the process of rectifying that. Um, the kids supplement that they usually take, unfortunately, is out of stock at the moment. But I am watching the website to see when it comes back in stock. And we're doing other things in the meantime. What else have I got here? I've got, um, right, vitamin D. Uh, because there's no sunshine out there at the moment and because we are so far away from the sun at the moment as a planet, uh, on our side of the planet, um, we wouldn't necessarily be making any vitamin D on a sunny day in the winter anyway. So vitamin D is one of those things that um, you may need to be supplementing with at this time of the year if you're in my part of the world. If we're in the South Pacific, Ain't no sunshine right now. <laughs> and uh, and I saw a couple of great um, or links to some great articles on um, studies done. Uh, one was about inulin, which is a, a kind of fiber. It's natural, natural. Um, it's a kind of fiber that comes from things like onions and stuff. And uh, apparently it has the ability to sort of upregulate your body's natural killer cells. Wow. So there's an immune boost just from a kind of fiber. Uh, and then I saw another great article recently about the thymus gland, which is in your chest, kind of, I think, sort of behind your sternum. I should have Googled that before I got on here. But the thymus gland is also a really important part of your immune system. And so sometimes um, stimulating that may be helpful. I did see an article on that. I will try and find it and post it later so you guys can read it and I can finish reading it as well. It looked interesting. There's all sorts of research going on all the time and um, you know you can't just take necessarily one study at face value but it's interesting to read some of these ideas and um, yeah collect some of them little critical thinking going on, interesting stuff. So um, my suggestion would be if your kids seem like they're really susceptible to all the bugs going around schools and kindies and everywhere at the moment, 
um, you know, try and make sure that they're getting adequate rest and they may just need to go to bed a little bit earlier at this time of the year. Uh, try and make sure that they're in the habit of washing their hands before they eat and that sort of thing. And I know kids hate to do that. Kids hate to do that. And sometimes we have to remind them, ad nauseum. Uh-huh. My husband would go, uh-huh. Yeah. Sometimes we do, but it's important, and that's a really, really, really basic strategy for helping to keep um, the germs at bay, and then trying to um, make sure that they're not always wanting to put their fingers in their mouths and, and those sorts of things, and um, try and give them a good wholesome diet, and if you feel like they're not getting enough nutrition from their diet alone, then uh, find um, a really good quality supplement. Not all of them are created equal. And if you want to talk about that sometime, maybe PM me and we'll, we'll have a private conversation about that. Uh, so if you have anything to add, if you have any other great um, tips and tricks for keeping the kids healthy in our winter, please um, drop them in the comments. That'd be awesome. I hope you guys are having a great day, despite the very overcast weather. <laughs> I'll catch you all again soon. Bye.